Welcome, everybody, to a, the newest edition of Pinfalls. Yes, we are keeping the title. Uh, I, of course, am John, uh, johngb.com. With me, as always, my co-host, the reporter, entertainment reporter extraordinaire, Candace Cordelia. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you, John? I'm trying not to sweat in this <laughs> box that I have. Well, I wish I, wish I had that problem because it's like dark and miserable out in Chicago, but, you know, better, better days ahead. But Candice, you, uh, you, today's a new episode. It's a, it's a whole new concept. You brought a, uh, a guest predictor. Would you like to introduce him? Yes. So I have today the wonderful Adam Barnard, podcast extraordinaire, journalist in both wrestling and also entertainment. Um, just a really all around great guy. And I'm so happy that we can have him on this episode of Pinfalls. So welcome, Adam. Thank you both so much for having me. I'm excited to be here and give my predictions for this awesome upcoming uh, professional wrestling event back in front of people. I'm very excited. And thank you so much for the introduction, Candice. That is fantastic. Uh, I appreciate it. Well, welcome, Adam. Well, welcome. Good, good to have you on. You are our first guest predictor. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, okay. Candice and I are both eight and three over the, the last two shows. So we'll, we'll see. Uh, and we, I think we only disagreed on two matches, I believe. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, we'll see how I fare. We'll see how I fare with the two of you. We'll we'll give it a shot. So let's hop right let's hop right into it. It's it's uh, the WWE Money in the Bank uh, card. It's going to be on this Sunday. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six matches scheduled or announced, I should say. So let's lead off with the WWE Championship. We got Bobby Lashley, the champ. He's defending against Kofi Kingston. Candice, would you like to lead off? Yeah, why not? Um, I mean. To me, it just seems simple, Bobby Lashley. I really just don't see Kofi. Once again, here we go. It's like, I love Kofi. He's amazing. I want him to win everything, but at the same time, I just don't see it happening. If it does, I would be very shocked. Um, It would be kind of early to see Bobby, you know, not retain being champion. Um, But never say never. But just for the sake of my opinion, I'm going with Bobby Lashley for this one. Adam? Uh, you know, I, I am inclined to agree with Candace on this one. Um, my my heart says Kofi Kingston because I want Kofi to win, and I'm always rooting for Kofi. I think he's one of, one of my favorite current uh, wrestlers at this time. But something tells me Bobby Lashley's going over. I just, I, I don't see the Lashley train stopping anytime soon. And I don't think Kofi, as Candace said, I don't think Kofi is the guy to stop Bobby Lashley. I think he's an unstoppable monster. I think they have done an incredible job with building him to be this vicious beast in lieu of Brock Lesnar. Uh, and I just, I think it's going to be an incredible fight, but I, I just don't see, I don't see Kofi taking it. I think it's going to be Bobby Lashley. Well, let's make it three for three. I agree with both of you. I think Bobby Lashley's dominance is going to continue. I love Kofi. It's just not his time, not, not against Bobby at this particular uh, pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. Wait, I- so let- yeah, I'm sorry? Are you quick question? Are you guys sad to see Lashley's ladies no longer be a part of his entourage? <laughs> I mean, look, I mean, look, it's a great, it was a great addition. Like, I, I get the storyline aspect of it, right? I love it. I think it was a great sort of addition, and it was a it was a great way to pivot back to like this insane Bobby Lashley character. I'm more upset about the fact that they destroyed the hurt business as quickly as they did. I still don't quite understand that creative. But I'm not necessarily sad to see them go. I think it needed to be done for Bobby to be that vicious, ruthless beast. Uh, so no, I can't say that I am. I mean, you know, it's it's you know, anyone with ladies is great, but it's it's just you know, <laughs> it, it's not it's not doing anything for me for the storyline. Mm-hmm. What about you, John? Yeah, no, I agree. I for Bobby to be this dominant monster type guy, I think he did need to to end that part of the storyline. Um, it it was rather quick, as you said, but. I don't really miss it. Right. Candace, did you miss it? Yeah, what about <laughs> I mean, you? we didn't ask you. Yeah, what's your what's your I thoughts? Do because I it was fun. It's it's funny because I know I've been reading up on uh it was just yesterday I was reading that they were doing away with it and that one of the ladies actually debuted both on Dark for AEW and you know being a part of Blade Lashley's ladies recently it's like she's been doing double duty which is really cool in my eyes so 
I, at this point, to be quite honest, if they're going to do away with it, I want to see the ladies branch out and do things like that. I'm really curious to know uh, what the future holds for them. So I'm, I'm invested in Lashley's ladies. I, I want to see what, what happens next with them. That's just me. You so. know what? Maybe they'll bring, them, maybe they'll bring hey. them back. I don't know. Maybe they'll bring them back. Something big yeah. happens. They'll bring the Hurt Business back. I feel like there's a great story with MVP there with that. I don't know. Maybe he'll be the one to bring back Lashley's ladies. But Hey, you never know. Stranger things have happened to yeah. WWE. Never say never, right? <laughs> exactly. So let's go to the uh, the WWE Universal Championship. We got Roman Reigns, the champ, who's defending against Edge. Candace? It's, I think that's going to be a barn burner of a match. But again, I mean, why would Edge be the one to take out Roman at this point? No offense to Edge at all. I mean, he's a legend in his own right, obviously. But we're, I, I just think he wouldn't be the person to do the job. It has to be something a bit more out of left field in my eyes, like someone who maybe either we wouldn't expect or I, yeah, I just can't see it. I, once again, I'd be really shocked if all of a sudden Edge was the person to do the job. It just wouldn't make sense to me. I, uh, I, I have to agree with you there. And I, I, if you, if you don't mind, I'd like to get a little granular on this one, because I feel like out of every storyline that's come out of the pandemic era and the, the performance center and the Thunderdome, Roman Reigns for me, arguably has been top notch. There has not been anyone anywhere in any promotion that gets as good as this Roman Reigns head of the table storyline. I don't care what anybody says. I don't, you can tweet at me. You can yell at me all you want because you're wrong. You're absolutely wrong if you think I'm wrong. I have loved watching Roman Reigns just topple and destroy the entire, uh, you know, roster. Uh, the Fiend, Braun Strowman, everybody. No one's, he's unstoppable. And I agree with Candice where I don't, I love Edge. I've been wa watching Edge for, you know, almost 20 years now, but he's not the guy. He's not the guy that's going to stop this train. There's more money for me in a match against him with Seth Rollins. That, that an Edge, I should say, Edge and Seth Rollins. There's just there's no money in this for me. I'd love to see it. I can't wait to see it. Spear versus Spear. It's going to be freaking fantastic. But Edge isn't the guy. For me, he's not the guy. I have an idea who might be the guy, and I think it's going to happen. But he's Edge isn't the guy. So I'm going to go with Roman Reigns on this one. But like Candace said, I think it's going to be a fall down, slobber knocker, barn burner of a match. But at the end of the day, Roman's going to take it. Well, I agree with both of you, and I'll say um, I think Seth Rollins might be making an appearance, and I think he, he might possibly cost Edge to win. You know, if Edge wins, it does nothing for either of these guys. You know, they're both, they both, they're both established, they're both great. Uh, it does nothing for Edge to beat Roman, and it certainly doesn't help Roman if he gets beaten by, by Edge at this point. So I, I, it makes total sense to me that, Ed, or that um, uh, Roman has to go for the win. What you think about it, too, as far as like with Roman Reigns and with Bobby Lashley, I mean, I feel like the company has spent so much time investing, building these characters, building these stories for them to just lose to someone that right. for me, it's right. the believability, right? You have to believe what you're seeing, right? For me, if it, you know, if I'm looking at Roman Reigns, the only person that I could believe in my mind that could topple Roman Reigns and take that spot for me right now would be Drew McIntyre. And I know that's an unpopular opinion. But I really feel like once this is all done and they do the draft or whatever it is that happens, maybe it gets up to SummerSlam, maybe Drew jumps ship quickly, Drew could be the guy to do it. I would believe a Drew McIntyre decisive, clean win over Roman Reigns. And I'm talking about ass-kicking ass win, right? Edge doesn't do that for me. The Fiend didn't do that for me. Braun, you know, all of the guys that he's toppled, even Daniel Bryan. I mean, like, incredible talent all the way through and through. But none of them are the guy. Roman Reigns is the guy. So I, I would be very curious to see. And again, I, I think it would be it would be a miscarriage of storyline and end of the arcs that they're building with these characters to say, hey, we're going to we're going to let them lose it at Money in the Bank. So far, we're in agreement. We're two for two. Let's see. Let's see how this goes with this one. We got the Raw Tag Team Championship. We got AJ Styles and, and uh, almost versus the Viking Raiders. Candace lead off. Ooh, I'm a little torn on this, believe it or not, because as much as my inclination is to go towards almost an AJ Styles, I feel like, I don't know why, I feel like the Viking Raiders might take it. Um, it just, it seems like they need to go in that direction to me. It would be really fresh. 
not to say that with everyone that we've been talking about, everyone is supremely talented without saying AJ Styles and almost that's a powerful team in my eyes, but I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm really going towards Viking Raiders. I think they're just like, there's a lot that can be done there. If, if they win this with many multiple storylines, I just feel like it's their time. And then almost an AJ can just go off and do, you know, they have other things they can do um, both comedic as well. Um, there's a lot to do with those two, but I just, I don't know. I'm going with Viking Raiders for this. I just, I just have a, a hunch. I'm just going to go with my hunch on that. Fair enough. Adam? I, you know what? I got to agree with Candace. I know I keep doing it, but she's right. She's absolutely on point with all of this. I think the Viking Raiders are going to take this one. For me, there, and again, like I guess maybe it's just me knowing AJ Styles and have watched him for so long. I don't get the pairing between him and Omos. Like, I get it. Like, I sort of get it. But it's not something that's ever been to me like must-see television, right? It's not like the Usos and Roman Reigns. It feels like it was a great way to build this Omos character because they need that big, nasty bastard, you know, now that Braun Strowman is gone. But to me, it's like, okay, let's move on. Ne you know, turn the page. Let's go to the next thing. I think this is a great way to reintroduce the Viking Raiders back into the fold since I know there's been, I think there's been some injuries or some kind of issues that have been happening with them. I think it's a great way, and especially for them to have a decisive victory over someone as incredible as AJ Styles. I mean, arguably one of the best that's in the game right now. Uh, yeah, I think, and, and long story short, and please, both of you, feel free to tell me to shut up at any time if I'm talking too much. But I, uh, I you know, I think, honestly, I think it's going to be the Viking Raiders. Well, I have to agree. I can't tell you to shut up if I agree with you. I agree with both <laughs> I appreciate you. that, we're, John. We're not Thank you. Agree. <laughs> but, you know, it, I, I will always lead in favor of established teams. And by that, I mean, like, the Viking Raiders, I think, are, are a, a real team. AJ and, and almost. I love both those guys. I especially love AJ. But, you know, they're kind of a mongrel team. They're put together for maybe the reason, like you said, to, to build almost up a little bit, uh, to give AJ something to do. That time has passed. It's time for the Viking Raiders to come. And I think the Viking Raiders are going to be a dominant tag team for a while. So I think they're, uh, I, I think we're going to see new tag team champs. I agree. I think, I think a lot of it has to do with also the fact that they're going back live. You know, a lot of the stuff they could get away with in the Thunderdome. You know, things are really going to change. And I'm curious to see because there's, no, there's a lot of, as, you know, Bruce would say, it's uh, the rumor and innuendo. But I, I, it's true. I think a lot of the storylines are going to change. I think there's going to be a huge shift in momentum with, in inside the company. I think there's going to be a lot of really cool stuff that comes back when people get back in front of crowds. But I, I, agree. Exactly. I, I think you're right. It's, it's a sort of like a hodgepodge tag team, right? And I, I think it's time for that to end. Yeah. Well, we're three for three, but this one should – should break the ties here. here we we go. got the men's Money in the Bank ladder match. There we so go. So follow one, everybody. We got Ricochet, Morrison, Riddle, Drew McIntyre, Big E, Kevin Owens, uh, Sh Sh uh man, Shinsuke, Shinsuke Nakamura. Not Thank you, and Seth Rollins. Whew. Uh, that was easy for me to say. Can <laughs> can <laughs> help me out? Take me off the hook. Who do you got? Literally, when I was looking at this list, I was like, can I just pick my top three? <laughs> and it, was it was easy for me to do that at first. So because I just like, I was like, no to Ricochet, no to Morrison, no to Riddle. I put yes for Drew McIntyre, yes for Seth Rollins, and yes for Kevin Owens. But Lord help me, Shinsuke, I want Shinsuke to win as well. I want him to win all the things. Like, my heart goes out to Shinsuke. I don't <laughs> think he's going to be the guy. But it's like, I want Shinsuke to just, like, what are we doing here? It's not <laughs> good for him. Like, give yeah. him a chance. Yeah. But overall, you know, I have to go with Seth Rollins. I, I'm not, I think I've said this before, I'm not the hugest Drew McIntyre fan. Yes, he's amazing in terms of his athletic ability his stature the way he looks etc but i'm gonna go with seth rollins i'm just going i 100 no to like rick like i said ricochet morrison riddle no kevin owens maybe big e i would love but i just see seth rollins taking this one so i have a feeling we're gonna disagree <laughs> Yeah, I think, so. I think this is the first time we're going to disagree, Candace. I'm sorry to break your heart, but I, uh, I honestly, for me, the logical choice is Biggie. I mm. think, I think, and and there's a couple reasons why. Because I feel like Morrison, John Morrison, and Ricochet would be fantastic choices to win this. Yeah. I just don't know yeah. what for me. And again, with Nakamura, I love Nakamura, 
But yeah. which one of these guys can effectively and realistically, believably beat Bobby Lashley or Roman Reigns? That's mm. where my head's at, right? When I think mm. about those three guys specifically, I'm thinking there's no way these guys could take any one of them. So I had to completely discount them as much as I don't want to, right? It's not about ability. It's just about believability for me, right? Matt Riddle, I absolutely cannot stand. I, I, I do not see the appeal with Matt Riddle. I think he's terrible. Um, you know, friend of my family, Bill Goldberg, you know, just look at what the man said to him. He's a complete disrespect. I, I am not a fan of Riddle. Sorry if you don't like that. I don't really care. But um, I don't I don't see Riddle winning at this point. Um, I don't think it's a, the right idea. And again, I don't think he's believable to beat any of these guys. So that leaves me with uh, four, right? You have Big E, you have Owens, you have McIntyre, and you have Rollins. Yeah. I don't think Rollins is going to win because there's no money in the fact that he could take the money in the bank briefcase. He's already done it, what, twice? I don't see it happening. I think the money's with Edge. Um, Kevin Owens is a very believable opponent, and so is Drew McIntyre. I think Drew McIntyre's storyline has run its course in its current format with becoming a champion. I think they need to break it down and rebuild him if he's going to beat somebody like Roman Reigns. I think that's what they need to do. Big E is the logical choice. Big E is a believable man who could beat Roman Reigns or Bobby Lashley. If you wanted my opinion, I would rather see him go after Lashley than I would rather see him go after Roman. I think Big E's going to take it. Well, this, if we can get a drum roll, that would be really cool. I don't, I don't have a drum set here. <laughs> That'll work. Thank you. Appreciate that. I knew we brought you on for something. <laughs> we're going to be all. We're going to disagree on this one completely because I'm going with Drew McIntyre. Interesting choice. I, I, yeah, I will. I will discount with no disrespect to them. I will discount Morris and Ricochet. Uh, certainly Riddle, uh, Kevin Owens, no. Uh, Seth Rollins, I think it's going to be pushed into the, the feud that we talked about before. Um, Nakamura, I just don't see him coming on. I think this is, I think it's going to be McIntyre, and I think McIntyre is going to end up going against Lashley eventually. Yeah. So, so we, hey, we've got, we finally disagree. You know, and, and all three. I got to tell you, too, if, if you don't mind me adding a small addendum to this, I'm glad that there seems to be some thought put into the Money in the Bank match this year. I know last year was kind of a mess and they just threw everything together and all of a sudden Otis wins and you're like, Otis? Yeah. This seems bizarre. Yeah. I'm like, I'm con like strangely intrigued, but I'm about it. And then, you know, now he doesn't do anything with it. And then the Miz wins. I will say though, Miz cashing in and getting his ass handed to him by Bobby Lashley. Like yeah. the Miz is the unsung MVP of that entire storyline, right? Yeah. Go back and watch that, that match where he just sells the hell out of that hurt lock. I, I can feel that. Like he just looks like he's being destroyed. And I remember watching it just being like that, like that's, that's it. That's it. This, this guy's going to just rule over, over raw forever. But I am very glad there seems to be some kind of thought process put into it this year. Any one of the three of these choices would be fantastic for the money in the bank. Um, I, I could see either one of your choices, but I just, I love me some Big E. I, I, I just, I love the guy. Hey, well, you know, we, we got some differences. So that's cool. Well, while our heads are still floating with, with the, the eight people, let's take it to the women's money in the Oof. bank match. Because th this would blow our heads up. We got Alexa Bliss. We got uh, Asuka, Naomi, and, and uh, Nikki Ash now from uh, the Raw brand. And we have uh, Liv Morgan, Selena Vega, and the recently just announced Natalia for the SmackDown brand. And there's one TBA, which is certainly a wild card. So, Candice, you could lead off on this little headache. Wait, I was kind of hoping you'd go backwards this time. <laughs> 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 like, this is that. I mean, to be quite honest, I love all of these women. I, I don't, off the bat, sorry to say, I, I have to say no to Nikki Ash. Don't see that happening. Um, uh, Zelina Vega, I don't see it happening. I mean, she's recently come on board again. I just, that would be a really, that would be a huge wild card. It's, and Liv Morgan, I love her to bits and pieces, but I just don't see it happening. So to me, it's it's going to boil down to like Natty, Alexa, Asuka. Naomi is like 50-50. I, oh gosh, I, another person, I love Naomi so much. And it's just, I'm like, give her a chance, guys. <laughs> like, <laughs> give her a whole chance. But I don't know if I see it happening. I would love that. Um, but it, it could very well be either Asuka or Natty. I, Alexa, 
I don't know if I, I, I just don't know. I just don't know. I don't know we're going to discuss her, you know, a little bit later on because there's so much, there's just so much happening and going on. Um, I think that something wild and crazy will most likely again happen because she's there and whenever Alexa's in the building, something wild and crazy ensues. Um, perhaps she'll put another spell on someone. <laughs> like, I mean, I could totally see that happening. Someone could fall from the ladder. I mean, who knows? But, you know, I'm, I'm going to go with it being between Asuka and Natalia with, um, I'm, I'm going to go with Natalia. I, I just, she's on a real winning streak. She's doing amazing. Um, I feel like it's her season. It's her time. Asuka is phenomenal, but I really do see it potentially coming between her and Natalia with Natalia getting this one. That might seem out of left field for, for some folks. That's my opinion. Take it or leave it, but that's what I'm going with. Um, but there's, but then again, we don't know who that other to be. Another. I was going to ask you, so are you right. discounting the, the TBA? I mean, for all we know, it could end up be. I don't think this will happen, but what if it ends up being like Becky Lynch coming back? Oh, don't steal my thunder. Well, I was going to say, yeah, let's give our predictions first without the TBA, and then we'll go back and we'll talk about who we think the, the, the third woman is. Okay, you know? yeah, I, I can't give my prediction without <laughs> The TBA is my prediction. <laughs> <laughs> but I will get to that after you. All right, all right, perfect. This was an extremely difficult um, uh, train of thought for me to figure out who I thought was going to win. Uh, my heart would love to see Liv Morgan win. I am a huge Liv Morgan fan. I think she's incredible. I think she's going to be part of the future of the division. Uh, and I think I love the push. I think it's fantastic. I think it's incredible. But I don't think it's going to be here because I think the storyline for her is being the underdog, right? She's a she's a little bit like Drew McIntyre, right? That storyline between her and Sonya Deville and wanting to get it and wanting to go. I think there's money there, and I think that's going to build out longer than the Money in the Bank match. I think she's eventually going to be a contender, right? Zelina Vega, I love the fact that Zelina Vega, Vega is back. Um, for me, it's very possible that she could win, right? I mean, anything is possible. Mm -hmm. But if you want my like actual true opinion on who I think is going to win, I think it could be Alexa Bliss. I think there's a lot of money in that storyline as well. I know I keep saying that, but for me, it's always about believability, money, and you know what's going to keep me hooked. Um, I think that there could be some some shenanigans that take place, some tomfoolery um, in the witchcraft world. Um, I don't know what's going to take place, obviously, back in front of fans with with Alexa Bliss, but. For me, she could be the most believable, especially up against a champion like Rhea Ripley. You know, you have those that those dark characters and the the sort of satanic, um, you know, uh, feel that Rhea Ripley has. Uh, it's very possible that she could win this. Um, I think for me, like I said, uh, but I'm not totally convinced, right? But I'm here to give a prediction, and I think if you're asking me my opinion right now, based upon the current players and contenders, I think it's going to be Alexa Bliss. Well, I'm going with TBA. And TBA is going to be the last kicker, the last kicker, Becky Lynch. Yeah. I think Becky's coming back, and I think Becky's going to clean house. Um, I I like all the competitors. I think um, – I actually think um, – um, uh, 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 God, now I lost her. Uh, I actually think Ash might oh, Ash. might win, might um, – with the superhero gimmick that she's got going, I think she's got a decent chance of winning this, but I don't think her time is yet. I think it's going to end up being. I think. I think the surprise entry is going to be um, uh, Becky Lynch. I don't know why they they announced. It, it boggles my mind why they announced Natty so late. It seems like there might have been another person that was that they planned and couldn't get, so they put Natty in there. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, why wouldn't they just name her right away? I don't quite understand that. Right. That, that's a good. That's a good question. But that doesn't mean that Natalia can't win it either, because that, that could have changed everything too. Um, <laughs> And I'm, and I'm a huge Natty fan. I've always loved Natty. I just don't think she's going to win this. I, I go with uh, uh, Becky Lynch on this one. See, I don't know if Becky Lynch is going to be the TBA, though. I think it I think it could very possibly be Sonya Deville. And the reason I say that is... Go ahead. Yeah. No, no, you first. You're still. Oh no, no, you're that's fine. okay. I didn't mean again. I keep hijacking this. I apologize. No, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I think I think Sonya Deville is a very real possibility to be that TBA. She is the authority. Yeah. She hasn't wrestled in a while. I, what would make most sense to be like it's you know it's me, Austin. I'm the guy, you know, or I'm the girl. Like, she could be that person, and then she could win. Right? It becomes a situation where she, you know, the whole thing with Liv Morgan is sort of a it's a it's a ruse, and then she beats the hell out of Liv Morgan and gets the briefcase. 
I could absolutely see Sonya Deville being a dominant women's champion. I apologize. I didn't do my research on her. I don't, I don't recall if she's ever held the women's championship before, either on Raw or SmackDown. But I think she could really kick some ass in that division. I think she could really be a shot of life in it. I think she could do it. I don't know. That's, that's what I think. Yeah. I, I was thinking that, too, because when you mentioned, John, uh, Becky Lynch, I mean, I, I see it potentially because all of a sudden, you know, you have these uh, photos coming out of her being in amazing shape and people are like, oh, you know, she's she's coming back. She's coming back. I just feel on the flip side of that, it would be too early for her to come back in money in the bank. I feel like it has to be for like a really big or bigger pay-per-view. Um, potentially SummerSlam or, or beyond that. I just feel like Money in the Bank for Becky Lynch would be way too early in the game, at least, or it just doesn't seem right. But Sonya Deville, I was thinking about that too, and I think that would be really awesome because I, me personally, I'm just seeing Sonya in the ring. She's great in a managerial role that she's doing. I really like seeing her put the suits on and she's very, you know, she, she's giving me really good boss vibes. But at the same time, I mean, she's amazing in the ring. People love seeing her wrestle. She's she's fantastic. And I think that potentially with that storyline that you were referring to, Adam, that would be really intriguing. So if that happens, I'm all for it. I don't know if she'd win it. If she did that, be that that would, you know, that would change things up immensely. But um actually I do hope. I do kind of hope she's T V A to be quite honest. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead, John. No, I was say, well, let's not forget there's there's one other, well, there's several other, I guess, but there's one other that I've been thinking of and other people have mentioned it. Sasha Banks could also be the TBA. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Think, I just don't, I don't think it being, I don't, for me, the storyline isn't there. Like that, that the, the idea of Sasha Banks for me is like, mm -hmm. eh, Sonya Deville, now you have my attention. It could be very much like Brock Lesnar winning in 20, it was 2019 when he won, but he just came up out of nowhere. True. Destroyed everybody. Grab the briefcase and went. I mean, it's very, very possible that I uh, that I could believe. I could believe Sonya Deville could be an ass kisser. Uh, ass, yeah, listen to me, ass kisser, ass kicker <laughs> in the ring. Um, but I agree with Candace. I uh, I think that Becky Lynch is going to be saved for something like SummerSlam. Uh, I don't think she's going to be trotted out quite yet. Um, but I think that's where their big money is. That's where they're banking on this this Vegas thing to really, really pop. Especially if some of the things that I've heard are going to take place. I don't know. I just hope it's not a, a letdown. I, I don't care if the TBA wins it. I just hope they don't just throw a body in there just to fill it because then why just do it, you know, name it already and, and, and the farce. Uh, honestly, I don't see this being a letdown at all. I don't see it being in any way, shape, or form a letdown. Um, I think it's very, very possible that something big could happen. Someone mm -hmm. huge could come out. I mean, it's probably, Becky Lynch. I mean, you could even throw in somebody like a, you know, I don't want to say it because it, it can be considered a dirty word, but like a, a test is a test Blanchard or someone from another company who is a massive, who could be considered a massive star in another company shows up and wins the money in the bank. I mean, I hope it isn't test Blanchard, but you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things. It's anything is possible, but I, I don't think it's going to be something that's insignificant than when, when some, when this person shows up. Well, I, I hope you're right on that one. Well, we will we'll see Sunday. We have one last match. We have the Raw Women's Championship. We got Rhea Ripley, the champ, versus Charlotte Flair. Candace? I mean, this whole time we've, we've started this pinfalls journey. You know, I've been saying time and time again, Rhea, Rhea, Rhea. And I'll say it once more, Rhea Ripley. It's just, I like where things are going now. And I'm like, you know what? Just keep, just keep the hate between the two to going like just let it just let it marinate keep it going Rhea's gonna retain it and Charlotte's gonna con going to continue to get more and more frustrated and mad until you know much later in the game I just can't see them giving this to Charlotte for money in the bank it, it, it once again just like Becky Lynch it has to be for something much bigger or much more bigger pay-per-view not to say that money in the bank isn't a big pay-per-view but you know, you want to see that at like a SummerSlam or, or a WrestleMania or something. You don't want Charlotte Flair to just take this title away from her money in the bank. So <laughs> it's going to be Rhea. She's just going to come out, do her thing, leave and go home. So <laughs> I like that. Come out, <laughs> grab it and go home. Yep. Yeah. Hey, you know, and again, I'm again, I got to say I'm with Candace on this one. I think it's going to be Rhea Ripley. I think uh, I like the fact that the continuity on this uh, where they're sort of continuing this from WrestleMania 36 and that the NXT championship match. And now we're in the Raw Women's Championship match. 
Um, again, Rhea Ripley, I can't wait to see what, she, what happens when she's back in front of a live audience. I think that it's unfortunate for a lot of these champions, these new champions, that they haven't had the opportunity to really sort of explode in front of people. And I think this will be her opportunity to do that because she got robbed of it twice. You know, I mean, she won the Raw Women's Championship at WrestleMania from Asuka. But, they're, you know, what I mean? like this is a significant pay-per-view because it is the very first pay-per-view where they're going to continue to be back in front of fans, right? 37 was a tease. It was so exciting to see everybody back, but they went right back to the Thunderdome, right? This is going to set the tone for the remainder of the rest of the year and in, into, in, you know, beyond, back into a normal state. Uh, I don't see Rhea Ripley losing the belt at this point. I don't think there's any reason for her to lose the belt. I think it's a great way to sort of put a capstone on this, this storyline between her and Charlotte Flair. Charlotte Flair is one of the best in the business, uh, undoubtedly and unquestionably, but I, I think it's time to let Rhea shine on this one. I agree. And I know, uh, you know, great minds think alike, if you, if you like, or maybe the WWE is predictable, whichever way you want to call it. Uh, it's not Charlotte's time to win this. I, I think uh, Ripley's going to maintain the title, be a little dominant, and the rain, like you said, uh, in front of a live audience would be fantastic for her. I think it doesn't hurt Charlotte to lose this. It might actually, as, as uh, Candace and I have talked before, it might actually help her to lose because it kind of builds her uh, anger, if you will. Um, I'm not sure. She might end up going to SmackDown maybe if they redraft. Maybe that gives her a fresh angle. I'm not sure. But in, in either case, I, I see Ripley maintaining the title on this one. So we got six matches. We agree on four. And we totally disagree on the, the two uh, uh, ladder matches, the Money in the Bank matches, which is fantastic. We'll, we'll they, see what happens. Are they still doing Bianca Belair and Carmella at this event, or is that on the pre-show? The last I heard, uh, it was not announced for the, the main show. So uh, I looked on the, the WWE website, did not announce it. I don't know if they're going to end up pushing on the, on the pre-show or if they might end up throwing it on SmackDown like they did last time. Oh, you're right. I didn't even think about that. That's going to be and, – and again, I'm, I'm disappointed I'm not going to see the payoff with Bailey and Bianca Belair. I thought that was, that was yeah. big, big money in that match. Um, but again, the same thing with Car- – it's the same conversation. Let's just say as a, as a side predictor on the pre-show, uh, I think mm-hmm. Bianca is going to retain. I think Bianca is my favorite champion right now i think she's got the look she's got the appeal she's got you know my daughter sophie is three and bianca belair she just lights up when she's on the screen so she's got that that crossover appeal for everybody i think bianca belair is the, the one for quite some time i don't see i i would be i would be very disappointed to see them take the belt off of her this early so candace you want to throw your opinion on that one Oh, 100% agree. It just, it really sucks. It's unfortunate um, to have, you know, what happened with Bailey being injured and being out for such a, a expansive period of time. I would have loved to see that. Everyone would have loved to see that match, but yeah, absolutely. It would just be, it's the same thing like with Rhea, the same thing you can say with Bianca. It's just way too early. And I like the fact that you brought up Adam, you know, because I personally keep forgetting that this would be the first pay-per-view in front of fans and in front of you know, a live audience, and they were robbed of, of, you know, some really amazing props and some really great moments having that in front of an audience. So they deserve to at least get a few more <laughs> moments, but at least have it in front of a live audience. And then, you know, we can see what happens afterwards. So it's just way too early for, for either Rhea or Bianca to, you know, not retain those titles. So it's going to go on for quite some time and, and they've earned it. And I, I just, I want to see it happen. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't think Carmella is the person to take the title from her. I just, you know, Carmella is, is decent, but I I don't see her as major championship material, at least right now. You had so many others that are in better positions and have built better resumes. I, I don't see that happening. I, I see her uh, holding on to the title. And hopefully we'll see it. I'm not sure when they're going to show it. SmackDown, pre-show, whatever. Um, hopefully we'll see it, though. But I wanted to uh, I wanted to talk about um, Alexa Bliss a little bit. She was involved in a, uh, a goofy multi-person tag match the other night, which mm-hmm. I think is a complete waste of her her talent and the storyline. They, they're building her up. She's got supernatural powers. Mm-hmm. She's able to put people in trances. Yet she's in a tag match. She doesn't do anything in the match. She doesn't. Why? Why couldn't she put everybody else in a trance? Like, do they completely forget about that, or is the trance <laughs> only? possible on certain people at certain times and it just kind of bothered me that you know they 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 build her up with the storyline 
Then they throw in a, a worthless tag match. They don't let her use her powers. Even if she didn't do anything in the match, let her use her powers, take somebody else out, at least continue the storyline there. But I, I saw it doing nothing for her. Wow. I, uh, Candace, you go ahead and feel this first. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm i trying to rack my brain around what I understand what they're doing with Alexa because she act, she's a good actress. You know, she, I, there's a reason why, there's many reasons why she is so appealing to fans and she has the uh, status that she has in WWE. She can certainly go beyond it. She has. She's dabbled into acting outside of WWE, and I can see her doing other things besides wrestling. What I'm trying to wrap my brain around right now is like where they're now taking this storyline. Because for me, it's starting to wane a bit. It's like, okay, I get it. I understand that she's, you know, she has this doll. She can, you know, make people do things of her own volition. Like there's things that she can do in this witchcrafty, you know, ulterior world that she has. But other than that, it's like, okay, so where, wh what is the ultimate payoff? Because at this point, I want to see someone else who also has her seeing powers come out and they be some sort of like tag team or something because just her doing it now by herself is just like, I'm like, okay, if I'm still seeing this in December, I just, <laughs> I want to see more. Yeah. So yeah, why do we see the like, tag match though? Does that mean, <laughs> like, does the tag match mean nothing to her? Then why does it mean anything to us? Like, well, if right, she's got yeah. that power, why couldn't she use it? That's an excellent point, though. Why, why it do is. any of this? Why do it? What's the point? It's time filler. It's again, it's, it's, it's the running down the clock of the of the Thunderdome, right? I, I love the Fiend. Let me preface this by saying the Fiend has been one of my favorite storylines in the past twenty years. I love the character. I love the terror. I love the fear that this guy brings to my life. Like, holy crap, this character is amazing, and they just should let him fly and let him just take it to the next level, right? Guy is a genius. And I loved the introduction of this Alexa Bliss character. For me, I thought they were going to go a little bit more Sister Abigail. I didn't exactly see them going to this Lily storyline. But to sort of kind of piggyback on what, what Candace was saying, I don't necessarily know that, that the, the, the Lily storyline is going to fly or it's going to jive in front of people. I don't think this is something that you can do in front of a live audience. The Thunderdome and, and the PC era has allowed WWE and to some extent AEW to do and get away with things that you wouldn't be able to get away from inside of, you know, in front of, in front of people, right? Mm -hmm. So I think what they're realizing that Sort of that's why Lily's in the the, the quote unquote timeout, but I don't know how that would translate. I also don't know how the superpower thing is going to translate in front of in front of people. I can also see this Nikki Ash and Alexa Bliss being very much like a Batman Joker kind of you know uh, hero and villain thing happening. And again, people are going to pardon my French, and you can bleep this if you want, but people are going to shit all over this stuff anyway, right? They will. They're going to say bad yes. things about it. That that's what wrestling fans do. We all hate everything for 20 minutes. And then it's like, it's, I call it the gritty effect, right? I'm from Philadelphia. So we, we, you know, we introduce gritty to the entire population. Everybody goes, why are you doing this to us, Philly? This is, this is egregiously awful. He's ugly. And we're like, Hey, shut up. That's our ugly thing. Right. And that's the way that every storyline of Candace, you can attest to that. Right. I mean, that's exactly the way it went down in Philadelphia with gritty, but it's, it's the idea being that as soon as somebody says anything negative about it, somebody's going to be like, hey, you can't say that, right? And now all of a sudden it's over. I don't necessarily believe that there is a long-term storyline or a long-term long -term thought process with Alexa Bliss, right? What's Vince McMahon and everybody say all the time? We're here to tell stories. We're making movies, pal. We, this is what we do. This is sports entertainment. So you have to keep that in mind when you're watching things like The Fiend and Alexa Bliss. But to me, I'm with you, Candace. If this is going on by Christmas and there's no payoff on this, shut it down. Get rid of it. Do something Please. else. Use her abilities and the way that she's mm -hmm. able to act and do these things and present the characters in way better ways than what you're showing me with right now. And I, I just don't think that's happening yeah. at this point. But to your point, John, I, I don't know what the point of that match was. I don't know why we're watching Xavier Woods and Bobby Lashley for <laughs> the 14th time. You know, like – I don't, I don't know. True. I have no idea why we're still doing all this. I mean, Matt Riddle and, and Randy Orton, for God's sake, someone make it stop. I just, 
you know, again, it's it's it's. I mean, and Matt Riddle just needs to stop completely. Please get him off my TV. Um, I just I it's it, it's one of those things again. It's the it's the it's the ramping down of the Thunderdome and the ramping up of back in front of people. I think that's what's happening, and that's why they're this sort of this Groundhog Day effect. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I have no problem. It's Janice knows. I have no problem if they get rid of the doll. I hated the doll from the beginning. I like the concept of, of Alexa having powers or whatever, as long as they don't go too far over the edge, like the ultimate warrior weird stuff. But um, I, I like Papa the Shango with the stuff falling from his head, right? Yeah. Good God. That, that too. Sure. Thanks uh, for the reminder. <laughs> but, you know, I, I think Alexa's got so much talent. But the, the thing that just bugs me, though, is the, the inconsistency. She yeah. either got the power or she doesn't. You don't throw her in an eight-person tag match and then have her not use the power. That have her use it on something. Well, at least right. you know, even if she gets disqualified and gets bounced out of the match, or, or you know, uses it on, on some, and it doesn't even affect the outcome. At least show it. It's like they just forgot. All of a sudden, now she's just a regular person in the match. But then next week they'll bring back the powers and she'll use it on someone else. And it just to me makes no sense and it drives me crazy. Definitely. And one thing I do want to add too, and I've said this in a previous Ken Falls episode. What would really pop for me is if they make Ailey an actual person. Like that's the they need they're they need to do that at this point. And I think they're alluding to it, but now it's like, no, you really in order for the storyline to take it to the next level, you have to bring Lily to life. Or else it's like, okay, so you have this voodoo doll that's just what okay, oh that's great, but <laughs> I want right. to see someone turn into Lily now and have it be, you know, it could be another wrestler that's already in WWE, make it someone who's not, like, just make it so that you blow our minds. Because if it's just going to be Alexa with this doll, and even if the Fiend comes back, it has there has to be another level to their relationship. Like, maybe she turns on him. Maybe she puts him under her spell. There has to be something that's much more riveting and and really takes it to the next level than him even just coming back and then it's like oh yeah the theme's back alexa's here we're we're on our path of, of destruction once again that's nice but what what are you doing with it <laughs> like I yeah to exactly yeah. Like, you know so yeah I think, well thank you thank you guys for letting me vent on alexa no. if, if you have if, <laughs> I, 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 I promise i have I, one last thing to say about this i promise this is done then, oh, I'm done. And then we can go to the next thing i promise um, I thought that the Fiend and Randy Orton storyline was a bit like wonky and jagged the way that it ended. It just sort of stopped. Right? Oh, God, yeah. So, like, watching that, I loved the build, right? The legend killer dies. Holy crap, I can't wait to watch this. Like, this is going to be amazing. And then he gets beaten by an RKO. <laughs> the Fiend, we're talking yeah. the Fiend Bray Wyatt, right? The same guy who snapped Finn Balor's neck, right? Mm. That guy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sure. Yeah. This makes total sense. I can get away with the Goldberg ending more than I could get away with that that WrestleMania 37 ending because at least the Goldberg storyline made sense if you look at it as a storytelling aspect. Right. right? We're making movies, pal. I think there is so much unfinished business here with Alexa Bliss. To go back to your point about the doll, which apparently we all hate, so we're all on board with that. <laughs> yeah. I I think and a more effective way to tell that story would have been to have Lily as an inanimate object or even not even a character shown at all it was super effective when they did sister abigail as just yeah. the thing right like just something that was there either inside of that 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 lamp or the rocking chair or inside that house that was a, an effective character that didn't need to be on screen you didn't need to see sister abigail to know that she was in charge right so if Lily would have been presented the same way, and maybe that's a downfall of the pandemic and, you know, everything that happened with, with the, the, the PC era and then the Thunderdome, maybe that's something that was a, a direct result of that. But I don't think the storyline is done between Alexa Bliss and The Fiend. I think there's more meat on that bone. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd be curious to see what happened. But, uh, yeah, I mean, to sum it all up, the doll needs to go. <laughs> well, see, I'm older than you guys, so I'm, I'm going to throw an old school out here just to wrap up my end with this. That as soon as I saw the doll, I immediately thought of the Road Warriors of Rocco. And I just wanted to put my head between my legs and just cry for a bit because that that, that killed the Road Warriors. And I yes. had the same kind of feeling for Alexa with, with uh, Lily. I'd like to see her just punt that into the audience. But <laughs> yeah. I'm with you, John. I'm with you. It's got to go. Candace, help us out. You said you had a, a, another topic to, yeah, to, to yeah. switch gears. So I was also interested to know what you guys thought about Mandy Rose showing up on NXT recently. Um, which surprised a lot of people and folks are wondering, well, 
are you going to be a manager there? Are you like looking for your next competition? Are you, you know, taking some time off in, from main roster and trying to see what's up with NXT? So I'm really curious to know what you guys thought about her appearing there just randomly, you know, very recent. Adam? Um, I love it. I love it just as much as I loved Samoa Joe showing up. I popped hard for Samoa Joe showing up. Love, love Samoa Joe. Love Mandy Rose. Love the idea of both of them being on NXT. Love the idea that they're both making NXT the real third brand again. The real EC- WWE CW again. Love it. I love everything about it. Johnny Gargano recently said that he feels as though wrestlers, you know, talent should go from NXT to Raw or SmackDown, but also from Raw and SmackDown to NXT. I think there's a real there's a real chance and a real believability and a real ability to make NXT the official third brand of WWE. I think if it's done right and it's presented properly, it can move from that sort of territorial approach to something incredible, right? You, I mean, the LA Knight and Cameron Grimes storyline with with the Million Dollar Championship, I mean, holy, that, that's incredible. It's incredible stuff. That was cool. You know, the Gargano and Karrion Cross, and now the storyline between Samoa Joe and Cross. I mean, it's just all of it is good stuff. It's all good stuff. And I think that if more people knew it was there, and I mean, most of the wrestling fans know that NXT exists, but I feel like if the mainstream were able to sort of get on board with it, and you're presenting this in a way, I mean, they sort of did that with Survivor Series 2019, right? I mean, they sort of started to present NXT as the next up-and-coming thing. I don't see why they couldn't do it. So, yeah, I'm about it. I can't wait to see where it goes. I can't wait to see what comes from it. Um, I think it's just her making sure that maybe she's like establishing her roots again. Maybe she's going back to formula. Maybe she just didn't see any challenges in the main roster anymore. And now she's heading back to NXT because that's where she's comfortable. It's a whole host of reasons why she could go, but I'm here for it. I love it. And I hope that I, for me, I hope it's a, a timing issue. I hope they extend it for a little bit without uh, playing her hand. I hope that we sit here for a, a few shows at least and question what is she going to do? Why is she there? Is she there to be a manager? Is she there to wrestle? Is she going back to her roots? I hope she kind of toes the line for a little bit before she reveals what exactly she's doing. I hope ultimately she does wrestle on NXT. And I agree with, with both of you. Um, I think it, it's going to be, it would be great for the brand. And, and I would love to see the three of them you know, viewed as people because there's no reason why it shouldn't be. Um, you know, to have three brands, but then to have one as a lesser brand kind of speaks bad on is if they're not making it the young people as young and up and comers, mm-hmm. then and then make it an equal brand. And, you know, and so that's, that I would love to see that. Yeah. yeah. I agree. I agree. I'm full agreement. And I love that it was in a Saray versus Gigi Dolan match too. I thought that was pretty decent. In fact, really awesome because I'm a huge fan of both of them. So, and Mandy Rose, and I've been waiting to see, I think I missed when Gigi, I don't know if this, I don't believe this was her debut on NXT. I think I missed that, but I, I loved her since she was in the Indies and it's really great to see her, you know, just shining on NXT with someone like Saray and to have Mandy Rose in the back, just kind of looking on. It's like, oh, I, I mean, the first thing that I thought about was perhaps she's looking at them to see if she wants to manage one of them, which I think would be really neat because I would love to see Mandy Rose manage. I love her wrestling, but to be quite honest, I can see, I can see her managing and that would be really cool to see someone like Mandy Rose managing on NXT and then to have like Sonya Deville, who's been in this managerial role, to see both of them, they were together and then to have them apart, both be managers. That, I, I would love that. I think that's really, really cool to actually see come to fruition. So that's just my take on that. Well, as, as Candace and I have said on the previous couple episodes, it, it really, uh, all that we're saying is it really speaks volumes of the, the level of women's wrestling right now. That there's there's so much talent in, the, in WWE and the other the, the other federations too, but we're talking WWE now. There's so much talent that legitimately so many of the women could be champions on either of the three brands. And the fact that we're talking about you know potential who's going to be we care about who's going to be the extra the two TBA we care about what Mandy Rose's role is going to be. We we even care about the stupid doll. We want you know we we care so much about Alexa that we want that doll out of the picture crushed into a you know hopefully a wood chipper 
but the, the state of women's wrestling right now is probably as good as I've seen at least. And it might even be overall, it might even be better than like going back to the, the Trish, Mickey, Lita era. You know, they, they were certainly Hall of Famers, but the overall talent right now, I think, is, is even better than that. So, I mean, it's a great time to follow women's wrestling. I think as a, as a capstone to that, like what you said, I mean, we all sit here and sort of struggled more on who was going to win the women's money in the bank than we did with the men. The men seems to be a lot more clear cut. And that's not to say that the men aren't talented or as, as it, it, it sort of the storylines aren't as important. But I think it really speaks volumes to the fact that like any one of these women, any one of them could be an incredible and appropriate and correct choice to win the money in the bank briefcase. So I think, I think, yeah, I agree with that completely. I think there's, I think there's more talent than there ever has been. And that's not to discount like the China's or the, the leaders of the world. I just think it's a, it's a different time. It's a different era. And they're finally starting to come into their own in a lot of ways. And I think it's, I think it's great. So I'm here for it. I'm, I'm all about it. I can't wait to see what happens this weekend. Once again, we all agree. <laughs> and before we wrap this one up, um, do you want to talk about your uh, podcast? Absolutely. I would love to. Thank you. And I want to just thank you both again for uh, entertaining me and, and, and allowing me to come on this uh, this great show you have here. I'm, I'm very excited. Uh, my podcast is called Foundation Radio. It is a pro wrestling centered podcast. I do uh, interviews. I do analysis. Uh, I do a lot of talking about pro wrestling, uh, which is now my life. Uh, at one, Candice Cordelia will be my next guest on the program this week. I'm very excited. I've also featured interviews with Bill Goldberg and Eric Bischoff, uh, Conrad Thompson, Solomonster. I've also had some non-notable wrestling folks on there like Asher Roth and Brandon Novak and Tommy Chung. Uh, you can find all of my archive in, at foundationradio.net. You can also follow me on Twitter and scream at me about Matt Riddle. My handle is at this is Goober. It's spelled exactly how it sounds. Uh, so come and talk to me. Come and engage me. Come and find me. I also do a lot of writing about pro wrestling on Culture Popped, which is a great pop culture website. Uh, you can find them at culture with a K popped.com. Uh, and I'll link everything in, uh, in the show notes. And uh, thank you both, John and Candace, for having me. This has been a lot of fun. Well, Adam, you said you're from Philadelphia before we wrap this up. Uh, yeah. Do you want to take Nick Foles back? No. <laughs> oh. Absolutely uh, not. I tried. I, I want tried, to take, I want to take Nick Foles back as much as I want to eat a Geno's cheesesteak. Here's how you oh, eat a Geno's. John, here's what you do with a Geno's cheesesteak. Step one, throw it in the garbage. Step two, <laughs> go to any Italian pizza shop in the 20-mile radius and get a cheesesteak. And if you put green peppers on it, you're in a big trouble. That's well, a sacrilege. Well, the, the problem here, though, is I don't eat red meat. Oh, so. even better. There's a great place on, like, Market Street called Cleaver's. They do vegan cheesesteaks. So you go ahead and grab one over there. That's where you go. Perfect, uh, man. I'm, I'm in. Now, Nick Foles was great back, you know, when he was supposed to be great. And, like, let's not forget he did beat, you know, Tom Brady. 41-33. Let's never forget. Never forget. But as in all things, like A.J. Feely before him, Things change. Times times change. So uh, I'm holding on to that 41-33 win forever and ever until the end of time. And you know, we just we march on to the next thing. But no, you you can have them. You're good. Well, if you if you change your mind, just let me know. We'll, oh sure. I'll drive you to the airport. Oh sure. Uh, I'll treat him to a, a Chicago deep dish pizza. Drive him to the airport. And it's all yours, my friend. Cool. Yeah. Well, you let me know. I'll give you my cell phone number. We'll uh, we'll we'll figure it out. Thanks. <laughs> well, guys, this has been a blast. Uh, any last words? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Looking forward to Money in the Bank, and I'm also looking forward to having fans back in the stadium. Taking my kids to see uh, the, the Pittsburgh show is where I live now. We're taking them this weekend, actually, on Saturday to see them, uh, see it live. And I'm just I'm, – uh, is it this weekend or next week? I can't remember. It's 24th. Can't wait. I'm just excited either way to get there and, and, and see a live wrestling show again. Well, enjoy. Candace, anything? Have fun. I do want to say, guys, so I have an amazing article in this issue, the recent issue of Pro Wrestling Illustrated. Ooh, look so at that. Please read it. It is a whole feature on Jade Cargill. And if you are not familiar with Ms. Jade, who was on AEW, well, this article will definitely help you out there. So it is, I'm trying to get to the page. Yes. So this is the first well, two pages. This is what it looks like, the first two pages. So check it out. It is also listed in a little blurb on the front cover. 
So yes, run cover real estate. Excellent. Congratulations. Thank you. As a journalist, this is like, you know, it sounds cliche, but it's definitely an honor. It's, it's what a lot of, or I'm not going to say a lot, all journalists wish to have their name in print. So the fact that I have minds in pro wrestling illustrated, I'm just super jazzed and stoked. So please pick up a copy. It is now on newsstands and also in digital. If you are one who likes to save trees, you can definitely read it online. So thank you all for your support. And thank you, Adam, for coming on the show. It's been really great having you. This is hopefully we'll get to do it again. So I would love to. I'm, I'm, I'm happy <laughs> to do it whenever you want me to come by, as long as we're not talking about Matt Riddle or the doll. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not done with that doll yet until that uh, thing is gone. Yeah, uh, that's, that's sticking in my craw. But <laughs> all right. All right, folks. I, Hey, it's been it's been a blast, Adam. Again, thank you for coming on, Candace. As always, it's always good to talk to you. Always good to share some laughs. And uh, let's let's see how we do in the predictions. Ooh. Sounds good. All right, folks. Thank you for paying uh, paying attention. Thank you for watching Pinfalls. As always, um, check us out. See how we did, and we'll be back for the next pay per view. Thank you for listening. See ya. Peace. <laughs>